good morning, good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. The Bible tells us, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Are you breathing this morning? <laughs> Let's praise God. Hallelujah. Father to the fatherless, defender of the weak. Prison for the prisoner, we sing. This is God in His holy place. This is God clothed in love and grace. Oh, sing out, lift your voice and cry out. Awesome is our strong God. Mighty is our God. With us in the wilderness, faithful to provide. With every breath and every cell, we sing. This is God in His holy place. This is God clothed in love and strength. Oh, sing out, lift your voice and cry out. Awesome is our strong God, mighty is our God. Oh, sing out, raise your hands and shout out. Awesome is our strong God, mighty is our God. There is no higher, no, there is no greater, no, there is no stronger than our God. There is no higher, no, there is no greater, no. and cry out awesome is our strong God mighty is our God sing out raise your hands and shout out awesome is our strong God mighty is our God sing out lift your voice and cry out awesome is our strong God, mighty is our God. Sing out, raise your hands and shout out, awesome is our strong God, mighty is our God. There is no higher, no, there is no greater, no, there is no stronger than I. No, there is no greater, no, there is no stronger than our God. Oh, sing out, lift your voice and cry out, awesome is our strong God, mighty is our God. Oh, sing out, raise your hands and shout out, awesome is strong God, mighty is our God, mighty is our
singing a song of endless age, echoing heaven. We join the angels as they sing. We join the angels as we sing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Worthy, worthy, Jesus Christ the Saving One. Oh, praise His name forever and ever. Behold the Savior, scars of redemption on his hands, bow down before. Come, let us adore the great I Am. Join in the song that never ends. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God, worthy. Worthy, Jesus Christ, the Saving One. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Worthy, worthy, Jesus Christ, the Saving One. Oh, praise His name forever and ever. Amen. Oh, his name forever and ever. Amen. Oh, praise his name. We worship you. We worship you. We praise you. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Thou art so worthy. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the honor and power and glory. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the honor and power and glory. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the honor Christ the saving one holy 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 is the Lord our God worthy worthy Jesus Christ the saving one oh praise his name forever and ever amen oh praise his name forever and
Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. We are an altar of broken stones, but you delight in the offering. You have the heavens to call your home, but you abide in the song we sing. Ten thousand angels surround your throne To bring you praise that will never cease But hallelujahs from here below It's still your favorite melody We sing hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah, we sing Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus, we sing. And should the fire that once burned bright Become an ember my eyes can see. I will remember your sacrifice. I will abide in your love for me. We sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
we sing hallelujah 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 we sing hallelujah hallelujah sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Sing that again. To him that sits on the throne. To him who sits on the throne sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory Blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. To him who sits on the throne. Blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory. Be blessing and glory and honor. Blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory and honor. Blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Yes. Be 
blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Yes, Jesus. Be blessing and honor to you. Psalm 145 says this, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. Amen. As we were singing that, last few phrases there, ever and ever. Verse 2, I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. And of course, when we all gather in here today, just being here with his presence is indescribable. It's, it's like an oasis from the craziness of life out there. It's God's plan for his people to be together. But I want you to listen to the next verse after the psalmist reminds us that we're going to exalt his name forever and ever and we're going to praise him. But it comes with a command of you and I. Verse 6. Let each generation say, that's me. Oh, we're all a part of a generation. Some of us a little more older than others. Some very, very young, <laughs> Tyler, yeah, very young. Let every generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Church, this isn't just for us. It's awesome to be in his presence, but we're to share this. God designed you with the ability to tell generation after generation after generation of his awesome works. So, Father, right now, I just pray for every person in the sound of my voice. Lord, first of all, we do, we're grateful that you can calm a place like nobody else can. <laughs> At times like this, we forget about our worries, we forget about our cares, our trust is built in you. Father, we thank you that as, even as we go at the end of the service today, that, that some of these cares we brought in, they're going to stay away from us because we totally trust in you. And Father, that responsibility you've given us to tell every generation. Thank you for trusting us. Lord, as we trust you, you are trusting us to share you with those around us. So we give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, find some other generation around you, all right? And just tell them hello. It's good to be here. Say hi, all that good stuff. We got the younger, we got the older, we got everything in between. Thank you, creative team. Man, oh, yeah, we could just go home now, but no, we're still going. So, so good of God to, when you sense his presence and know he's with us. Wow. Uh, but we're not done yet, and God's not done yet. We're just going to keep on going with him. When you walked in today, I'm sure you received what we like to call our welcome guide, right? In the welcome guide, there's all kinds of information uh, as to today's message. And we've got an update on all the missions we support in there. We'll try and get you some new information each week just to keep you in prayer and aware of what's going on around us. So that's there. We have those for you every week. Inside, most importantly, we have our connection card. On our connection card, there is a place at the top for your name. All right? And so if you... Uh, if you if this is your first time here or you've been away for a while or you need to update your address, there's a place to fill out that information in there. Uh, if you make any sort of commitment for Christ, a decision, we really want you to check one of those boxes just so the pastors and elders, we can be in prayer with you over that. And then finally down at the bottom, there is a place for prayer requests. So there's a place for the whole prayer team that meets every Saturday here at what time? at nine o'clock right and we spread those prayer requests out here we have a word of, from the lord we worship together we pray over those requests and god answers prayers amen yeah so that happens every saturday but then beginning sunday afternoon pastor shannon gets those out to all the pastors and elders and we begin praying over them if it is a very private matter and you just like the pastors and elders to be praying then you just mark confidential and we will respect that also at the end of church today there's a little black box back there you know the instructions. you got to fold this in half or in three parts to get it down in that box because the hole's not big enough, but that, that is there for you. All right. I didn't put any. I've got some church. I don't have any. Really, I don't really have any. I have some church news, but I don't have it formatted to where I want to tell you yet. So church news is suspended for a week. All right. Yeah. All right. 
Church news, yeah. It's coming. i got several things coming up that I need to share with you, but I wasn't ready to present them. So it's like, okay, Lord. So it's like, we can flex with that. No worries at all. I thought that was funny. That's right. you got to come. That's right. That's right. Whatever works, whatever it takes, short of sinning, I will do whatever it takes to get you to come to church. All right. Well, before, uh, here it is, summer, and you guys are here anyway. That's awesome, you know. Uh, so glad you're here. Now, before I get into the message, which I'm, I'm excited, but i got to give you a disclaimer on that, too, because I thought I was finishing on this subject today, but I got a request from someone. Is, could you tell me the truth about such and such? I said, okay. So that's next week. But I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, you know. But, but she's, she's been following this whole series, and she knows what we're doing, and uh, she watches online. And so she says, would you tell me, would you, would you give me the truth about this other s- subject? And I said, yeah. And then I started thinking about it. It's like, man, I may have a couple more after that, too. So anyway, we've been on this series about a truth. But first, before we begin that, can I tell you about my friend Jesus? I mean, my goodness, what a week we have had. I hope you have had the same, too. I want to tell you about a little experience I had with him this week. And it seems kind of maybe unusual to you. I don't know. Uh, this, was, this is what happened to me. Whenever I have challenges in life or I'm contemplating something or wondering why, I, I turned to, number one, the Word of God, and in prayer, and I have a, a talkative dialogue with the Lord. And so when I say, when I tell you about my friend Jesus, it's like, I'm not a crazy person, but he does talk back to me, all right? And every single one of us, we know it's different with everybody. Some people, he'll remind us of a word. Some people will use something. I, there's only been two times I've heard an audible expression from him that was very brief. Um, but most of the time, it is like it talks in the scripture in the Old Testament about a still, small voice. Something pops up in you. And it's, and it's confirmed in the word. It's like, yes, that's you, Lord. So anyway, I found out that someone in my neighborhood, a young man, has made the decision he's no longer a Christian. Oh, it hurt. It's like, oh. And, and I'd, I've watched this young man. We've lived in the neighborhood for six years. We, I've watched this young man and his family, and I've, I've watched him come to some youth events. And, and he's not a part of our body, but I've seen him. And, and I just I have felt this grief inside. It's like, oh, what happened? And, and I'm sure all of you have experienced that, where you've had friends or family or acquaintances. They're serving the Lord. We... We like to say, on fire for God. They've been on fire for God, okay? And then all of a sudden, something happens, and they stop. And it's grievous. And some of it's our, it's our own family members. Some of it's his friends. Some of it just, it's just really grievous. And so, so my, my best time to talk with the Lord is, is when I walk the dogs. So, you know, we, I, I, so we, this is something we do. You know, sometimes I'll put, a, uh, I'll put some music in, or sometimes I'll put a, um, a podcast on, or And this maybe doesn't make sense to some of you, but I can't read the word or pray about something without some other noise. Because if I don't have noise going, I just get sidetracked. I just kind of like think all over the place. That part of my brain gets occupied by whatever's on there. And it's like it opens the door for the Lord to just really speak to me. So I was talking about him, and I know where he lives in our neighborhood. Every time I'd walk by his house, it would come back. And and I felt a lot of weight and pressure. It's like, Lord, how, how can we be helping people? Because the world out there, the enemy, is just after people. I mean, you can do everything right. Read your word. You know, go to church. This and that and that. Pray. Uh, have good people around you. And then the enemy somehow is so manipulative, and he does this to people, he just brings something that casts that little bit of doubt. It's a little bit, and it, it takes hold. And, uh, and again, I was, I was thinking about this, and, and, and I got this like, oh, What every person needs is what you all just experienced a few minutes ago. What every person needs, because you're constantly bombarded with these things all the time. Why believe in God? He failed you here. This person did that. that You're constantly, what you need are personal experiences with the Holy Spirit. It's like, it's like when you know, it's, it's like, it's like, you know beyond what you know, and you're not counting on someone to tell you, or you, it's like, I remember when. That's why in that scripture it says, tell the next generation. You want every generation to experience time with Christ. And then right away, as a pastor that puts all this, oh, Lord, how am I, how am I gonna make sure everyone experiences Christ and, and he, when they're in here, the presence of the Lord? And, and, uh, and that's so 
what's the right word? Prideful of me. Like, I'm the one that's going to do this. He goes, no, it's all your people. He says, you got people who experience the Lord all the time. It's the way they relate to each other. It's the way they share. It's the way they enter into worship. It's the way, it's when you come together and you're a part of this and the presence of God flows. That's what makes a difference in people's lives. So I see more than ever the importance of a church body gathering together and allowing people just to experience the gifts and callings through different people and just experience his presence. So I just, I just want to salute you. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's like, when this all happened, I got such a weight lifted on me because all the pressure's on you guys now. It's like, oh, okay. It's not up to the pastor. Pastor has an important role, but it's the body of Christ. And he said, what we need to do, and this is happening all over. You know, I don't know if you hear stories from people. I got a story from a, a, a church over on the west side in Beaverton, and, uh, the, the, and they, they posted this long post about, about, about revival. Com- revival is coming, but people need experiences with the Lord. And it's not like what we used to. We got, oh, I used to do it this way. No, it's God's doing something. So I just want to encourage you as we continue on today that, first of all, applaud you for being here, enjoying the presence of worship together, shutting out, even if it's just for an hour and a half or an hour and ten minutes or however long we're here, the influence from the world, just practicing that, listening for a spirit, listening for his presence and being a part. And so, make sense? All right, here we are. This is the final session of Summer of Truth, but it's really not the final one. So I cannot lie. Uh, We're going to continue the next week or two with a couple other topics. But this kind of completes the series that I felt the Lord kind of downloaded into me a few weeks ago. And it's based on this verse in 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 15. Because there's all kinds of stuff going on out there. We've got to be grounded. 2 Timothy 3, 14 says, You must continue to advance in strength with the truth wrapped around your heart truth. And there's no more truth than what the Word of God says and who he is, and he is the author of all truth. And again, it brings back to childhood, that second verse. So much, that's why we put so much emphasis on our children. That's why you put so much emphasis on your children. It starts from a young age. Remember when you were taught from your childhood, from the Holy Scrolls, which you can impart to your wisdom to experience everlasting life through Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. So we all need to stand up for truth. Amen? Stand up for truth. So we had these five topics, and who knew there would be a part B, but there will be. But we're finishing up the first five. And we talked the first week about the truth about God. We talked about the truth about Jesus. We talked about the truth about me and you as people. Last week we talked about the truth about the church. There's all kinds of ideas about the church out there. Today's pretty cool. It really tied into the, to the music. When the Holy Spirit inspired, I think Wes came up with this list, it's just, it all, it's all about eternity. I mean, our songs were about him sitting on the throne. We're about, about him and who he is and, and aspiring towards those things. And, and uh, we're going to talk today about the truth because there's some misinformation out there about eternal life. There's pressure put on people. There's all kinds of things that are not in the Word of God. They just, uh, yeah. So, so anyway, so we're, we're going we're to talk about that and, and uh, uh, over this next 30 minutes or so. When I say heaven... Right? And you don't have to answer out loud, but, but what do you think of? You know? I mean, I, I have my thoughts about heaven. I, I, you know, I, 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 sometimes I think of, you know, which is not the right way, but I think of, you know, what cartoons taught me, and heavens are clouds floating in the air, and people, angels are sitting on the clouds, and that must be what heaven's like, you know? And, and, uh, but I, I think about, about um, uh, no pain or suffering, I think about uh, being reunited with loved ones, and, and I think about seeing Jesus face to face. And it's so hard for us to understand what that is really like. And there's lots of scripture on this, and we're going to share some of it. But, but it's hard for us to imagine in this temporal world what an eternal world is like with no pain, no hate. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's just a... It's just a thing, hot, tough thing for us to wrap our heads around, I believe. So the first thing I just want to kind of establish is what the Word of God says about eternity. And this is where some mistruth has come out there. There are some people be- that believe, probably not you, but there are some people who believe that when you die, that's it. Lights out. Action over. Go for the gusto out of life, because when it's over, it's over. That's one belief. 
there's another belief that I think is more dangerous than that one. There's one belief that says there is really no hell. That, that, that there is no, there is no, you know, you're either with God or you're not, but God's so loving that would never be created, and how could God, who loves us, create a place for eternal uh, damnation and all those sorts of things? Again, it, it feels good to our, I don't know, our psyche. But when you start trying to reason things out, that doesn't work out either. So, What's the deal about eternal life? What, what is the deal that we need to really get a hold of as a church? How can you walk away today? I, I am not going to preach on hell, although there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not really going to preach that much on heaven. I'm going to preach on our job here as we move through this life till we get to heaven. Because that's the real key, I think, behind the whole thing. The first part we have to understand, I believe, and I, those of you that still have copies, there might be copies back there, but our statement of faith, I pulled out some different things about our statement of faith. And so the first one is just, we've got to understand what resurrection is. Right, usually when we think of resurrection, we think of Jesus Christ, which is awesome. He set the example. But the truth of the matter is, everybody resurrects. Everybody. Jesus Christ was physically resurrected from the dead in a glorified body three days after his death on the cross. In addition, we believe this, both the saved and the lost will be resurrected. Both people, both people that have a relationship with Christ and those that don't. When you die, it's not over. Your spirit lives on. Those are saved to the resurrection of those that are saved to the resurrection of life, and those that are lost to the re resurrection of eternal damnation. Damnation. Well, again, we'll get into that just a little bit. But the point I want us to get, number one, is this: is that number one, the truth is, we all live in eternity. Everybody does. People that know God, people that don't know God, people that love God, people that don't serve God. Everyone's going to live in eternity. That's how God created us. Scripture tells us this about eternity, 1 Corinthians 15, 42. It is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die. But they will be raised to live forever. More specifically, jump down to verse 44. We're buried as natural human bodies. But we're raised in spirit, as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, like we're all seeing with each other right now, there are spiritual bodies. The spiritual body has to go somewhere when it's raised. When you raise something up, it doesn't stay there. It raises up to go. They go somewhere. And the deal that's so exciting is you and I, we have the choice. We have the choice where we want to go. Because number two, the truth is we choose. We choose where to spend eternity. God doesn't choose it for us. He has a desire for every one of us. The word says his desire is that every one of us go and be with him. So let's, let's, take, let's take a look at what, me what it means to choose seven. It's on page seven in your booklet, or you can look at the screen behind me. Heaven is the eternal dwelling place for all believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now just... Again, this isn't scripture. This is just an adaptation from scripture. But just take that for what it says, all right? Well, you mean it's just for the good Christians? It's just for the religious ones? Who, who, no, it's, it's for all believers in the gospel. All believers. Paul is talking to his followers of Christ in 2 Corinthians 5, the first verse. For we know that when this earthly test we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, look at that. We will have a house in heaven. An eternal body made for us by God himself, not by human hands. So here's what we know, just what I'm, our lightning quick minds are getting from just this little bit of scripture. The first point is that is heaven is prepared for you. You aren't an accident. Babies in the womb aren't an accident. Every person, there's a plan. God has already planned and prepared for you. Jesus said it this way. Matthew 25, 34, he says, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. 
Oh, I just put something together real quick so you had a place to go for eternity. No, Jesus prepares this for you. Yesterday, no, from the creation of the world. God's always had this plan for you to have a prepared place. And not only is he prepared it, I believe he's custom, the next fill-in, made it for you. Made it. For, we all have all these different personalities and likes. And he made it for you. Back again to that 1 Corinthians 5.1, the second half of it is, we have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God. Made for us. Made for you and me. All right? It's specific. Now we're getting to the good part. Ready for the good part? Ready? Hold on. Because this is a part that I don't like. And I'll explain that. But the truth is, ready? Heaven has two tests. Two? Two tests. What are you talking about? Now, let me just tell you, I, I don't like tests. When I was in college, um, I don't know what, my high school, we didn't have finals. So it was like, I don't know why, back in, I don't know, we were a country school, I don't know, it's, I don't know, maybe they didn't have them back then much, I don't know. We didn't have finals, and so, so I didn't know what it was like to go into a college experience, and all of a sudden you were tested over everything you learned. And that's what happens, right? And so the first few tests, I was overwhelmed. It was like, you mean I got to remember all this stuff and everything that's going on? And, and I had it in my head because I would like multiple choice tests because I thought, well, at least then I have a one in four chance of getting it right. I didn't want those essay tests because back then they gave you these paper books. Well, you had to go buy them at the bookstore. And you were like expected to fill the whole thing out. They'd give you one question. You'd have to fill the whole thing out. But truthfully, I always did better on those tests than the multiple choice. Because in the multiple choice, I would, I, would, I would doubt myself. Well, maybe it's this one. Oh, maybe it's that one. Oh, maybe they're trying to trick me. The thing of it is, there's so much information out there about heaven. There's so much information about eternal life. God made it so simple. Yes, learn. Yes, yes, grow. But there's just some simple things we need to grasp that everyone can grasp. He's telling you ahead of time what's on the test. He's telling you ahead of time. And this first test, every person, believer and unbeliever, takes. Everybody takes it. And there's only one correct answer. And he makes sure in his word that he gives it to you. You guys like having the answers ahead of time? Yeah, I do too. All right. I like that. Here's the first test. Like I said, the first test is a test that every person, because we know every person has eternal life. Every person who has ever lived is going to take this. From the beginning of time till the end of time, every person will come before God on the great... Remember, who's to him who sits on the throne. Okay, we're going to go there. He sits on the great wide throne of judgment. Revelations 20, verses 11 and 12. John says, I saw this great white throne to, and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was, there was no place for them. And I saw, verse 12, the dead, great and small, before the throne. And get this, and books were opened. Books were opened. And then he's, it's a whole separate sentence. And then another book was opened. So two things are going on. Books are opened, and then a book is opened. This is what he sees in his vision, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Hmm. Again, notice there's two different words for books. One is plural, one is singular. The plural book is the part I kind of am looking forward to. I don't know if, don't know if he's going to do it on a movie screen or what, but he's got everything done recorded. Everything you've done, good, bad, whatever, indifferent. Everything is there. That's just because there's nothing... The Bible says there's, there's just nothing. There's not a tear that is missed. There's nothing is missed by God. He sees every detail. And it only takes in something like that, according to the word, one mistake or one sin to make it unholy. So God had to provide a different, a different way. There is the singular book that I want to talk about here. The singular book is the book of life. It records the names of the people who have surrendered their life to Jesus as Lord and Savior. 
because he's the only one that can pay your sin. Your debt is canceled, your relationship with God restored. I think the first test is kind of something like this. You're before the throne, and God's going to ask you this. Ready for the question? What did you do with my son Jesus? What did you do with my son Jesus? Now again, my old school self would like trying to, is that a trick question? I got to look for all, all the, you know, I'd find all the answers that fit that. And I'd say, oh, I went to church, and pastor said to sing, so I sang. And, you know, uh, I read the Bible. I memorized verses. That's not what he's asking. You could even say, I believe in him. I believe pastor had us all raise our hand, and, and he said, do you believe? And, and, and I said, I believe. All right. You could do that. I believe he's your son. And he said, ah, what did I do with your son, Jesus? Man, he inspired me. I just love reading through the Gospels. Again, we're all looking for these answers that aren't part of the question. Aren't part of the question. They're good answers. I mean, yeah, you want to. That's why if you had an essay, you could write all that. That'd be good (laughs) because you can write all that stuff out. It's so good. Yeah, read your word. Pray. Be with believers. Sing with all your heart. Believe in Jesus. All those sorts of things. But technically, they're wrong. That's not what God's looking for. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. And this may sound a little harsh, but if we just take the simplicity, it's so simple, it's so good. Jesus says, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, I don't know what to do. I'll just call out the name of Jesus. I would do it, but it's like, Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven who enter. He says, on judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. In Jesus' name, this should happen. We cast out demons. Demons go in Jesus' name. Many miracles were performed in your name. Verse 23, but I will reply, and it's highlighted, I never knew you. The most important part that I believe the Lord is trying to speak to us here, it's not in the things we do. It's the relationship with him. You get this right, you have a relationship with my son, man, I'll see you in heaven. Because he will cover every sin, every wrong, everything impure, because I believe in heaven it's just the good stuff that gets there. I really do. It's just the good stuff. It's so easy. An answer would be like, what did you do with my son Jesus? I knew him personally. (laughs) We had a relationship. Him and I, we were walking the dogs, and and him and I would talk. And I did do that. I was in church service, and I gave my heart to the Lord, and I actually actually believed it and walked it out and and kept kept praying and asking him for his help. I did that till my last breath. That's what the Lord's looking for. You'd say, "I, I have a close relationship because he loved me first before I could love him. Now, the second test, first test, right? What is it? What's the answer? Relationship with Jesus. Everything in the gospel points towards relationship with Jesus. Everything we do points to relationship with Jesus. The second test is not for the unbelievers. The second test is only for the people who are in heaven. So you've answered that question. Because he already, you answered the question, what did you do with my son Jesus? Ah, I loved him. I had a relationship with him. He's my savior. The second test is the Bible talks about there is another, there's a judgment that happens. Again, a lot of misinformation about this. This is where people put a lot of weight on stuff and a lot of, um, well, sometimes not the truth. It comes after your entrance to heaven. And it's an evaluation of how we lived here on earth. What we did with what God entrusted us with. 2 Corinthians 5.10, for we must all stand before Christ and be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good and evil done in this earthly body. Now, I'm just going to tell you, judgment seems like such a harsh word. 
judgment really is, when you look up the original word, it really is, it's, it's, he's above, like, it's like, like a judge in a, in a chamber. You know, they're up there, they're sitting there, and, and, and you're standing or kneeling before them, and you're slightly lower. You're, that's what judgment is. The Lord's going to do something. But, and maybe this is just me, this works for me, maybe it doesn't work for you. I think of it more like an Olympic award ceremony. And I don't even watch the Olympics, but I can picture this, okay? When the winners get up there, what do they do? They get their medals on. They get, you did this, you did this, you did this. This was awesome. They lift you up. What you did. I believe that's what's going to happen. It's merely a celebration of what you did here on earth. How you made a difference. And there, I don't know, I can say, is it going to be on a vi video? I'm not sure how he's going to do it. But it's going to be a replay. Matthew 16, 27 says this, For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with all his angels, and then he will... I'm not making this stuff up, people. This is the word of God. He wants to reward you. This is God's plan. This isn't like, oh, I'll get you to do this so you'll get reward. No, this is God's plan. This is his heart. He cannot wait to have his kids up there. So he can reward us. See, each according to what they have done, God gives us so much energy, right? He gives us so much time, so much skills, so much opportunities, so many ideas, certain talents, and it, he trusts us to steward those well. He loves us. He wants to bless us. He wants us to use the leverage we have to take people with us. So really, I think the second test is more of a reflection. Like I said, the first one was, it, it's, the first one is about his son Jesus. The second one is, you know, what did you do with what I gave you on earth? Now, of course, he already knows. <laughs> but he wants to show you. You know, you ever been in something and your teacher or your coach or someone, they, you know, you feel like you've just messed up, you bummed up the game, or you did bad on the test, and all it takes is one or two words of encouragement, and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. See, I believe in heaven. <laughs> You all have touched so many people, you don't even realize it. You're going to see those decisions, those sacrifices you made, how worth it they were. I really believe that with all my heart. I believe God wants, to say, wants us to say, I, I used everything you gave me to make a difference in eternity. I think that's what he wants from us. So here's how I want to respond with this last five minutes. I can't do the part for you where you have to surrender yourself to God. That's between you and the Lord. I can help you with the second test. I believe that's why God designed the church, to help us with the second test. Again, the Apostle Paul speaking to the Corinthian church and the people of God like you. And he uses an example of building a good foundation based on Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, For we are both God's workers. That's you and me. We are God's field. We are God's building. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 13. But on Judgment Day, you build a building. It catches on fire. What's left? Ashes. Nothing. On Judgment Day, will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, the builder will receive a reward. Now, you can't take our possessions to heaven. You can't take your car to heaven. You can't take your boat to heaven. You can't take your, your uh, dog to heaven, although I believe they're there in Jesus' name. What do you take with you? People. 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 God's in the people business. You take people with you. And that's what that's referring to. If the work survives, if there's other people in heaven because of you, gold star. I wonder what a Jesus gold star is like. It must be awesome. The reward is really about people. It's not about, it does talk about crowns, all those kinds of things, but those all equate to people. It's all people that get to spend eternity with Jesus alongside you and them. It's further instructed, uh, 2 Corinthians 9:11. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous. That's why we're all generous. Generous 
and when you take your gifts to those that need them, they will thank God for them. So if we want to do well on the second test, i got five things, and we'll walk through them quickly. Five things that we can practice today. I don't want you walking out of here today. I didn't learn nothing in church today. I didn't, I didn't learn. No, I want you to learn how to take the word of God and apply it to your life today. You do these five things, or learn, maybe you learn something new in them, and I'm going to help you answer that question, that second question in heaven, when God reviews the things that have happened to you. So, so on the second test, to get ready for it, A, give your time. Give your time. For most of us, time is more valuable than money. I mean, it just is. Especially as you get older and older and older, you realize it. <laughs> you wish you had more time. Of course, we all, money has a lot of purposes, but give your time. We all spend our time differently, but we all have 24 hours in a day, right? I suspect we all spend too much time on things and activities that don't have eternal value. Not that those things are wrong, but it's just like, what can we do? We must be deliberate, intentional with our time. Each day, choose to use your time wisely so that a portion of it is used to help others learn about eternity. Whether it be just a smile, whether it be taking someone a meal, whether it be praying for people, whether it being just a good witness, whatever that is, give your time. Serve the church, not just our church, the body of Christ. Ministries we support, believers, unbelievers. Choose each day a life that will be remembered in heaven. Be someone who needs a friend. Those are all godly things to do. The second part of that is, B, is, is do give your talent. Y'all got talent. Like I say, when I, when I was talking to the Lord about, you know, the, the one young man who was, didn't feel like he was going to follow God anymore, it's like, and God said, you know, just the presence of God through all of you being together, willing, eager, expecting the Lord to move, expecting God to use you. Give your talent. The purpose goes way beyond you. I told the, pastor, the elders yesterday at our, at our meeting that God's plan for this campus goes way beyond me. Way beyond me. It's his plan. We've got to be a good steward. Consider how your talents can affect generations after you. Remember that, that scripture we gave? Praise God, let the generations see you tell them what's going on. It affects not only you, but those after you. So join a ministry team. Be a part of hospitality. Be a part of children's. Be a part of worship. Be on the creative team. Somewhere on those pillars of the church. Lots of opportunity to make an impact for generations to come. Now the third thing, and it's more of an explanation than a specific, but give your touch. And I'm not talking about physical touch. Everybody touches things. The way we dress, the way we act, the way we look, the words we say. You make a touch on people's lives. That's what I believe we want to be doing. I'm not, again, I'm not talking about physical. The way you interact with people at home, at school, at work, at church, in line at the grocery store, everywhere. How you interact can change the course of their life forever. A smile, a handshake. Many of us, myself included, struggle we're frustrated, even get a little rage involved with what's happening to our culture and our society. There's more opportunity than ever just to touch people's lives for Jesus, just to bring some hope, bring some life, bring some care, because we truly are peacemakers. We reflect, you reflect God's character. Make the, make the most of every opportunity and leave people thinking, why is that guy so happy? Why is that woman so full of joy? That's the way you want it to be. Point D is this. Truly, give your treasure. All right? Treasure. Obviously, treasure includes your money, but it refers to your whole attitude towards finances, what you have, your possessions, your home, your lifestyle. And think, instead of thinking about how little you can do to fulfill your mission or your, what you're supposed to be doing, think about how you can maximize it. How can I give more? How can I feed more people? How can I share more of what I have? How can I do more? How many people can I impact? God, you've given me this job, this career, this amount of money, this talent, this ability. Oh, man, 
how can I share treasure? Everybody loves treasure, right? That's why pirates are so exciting when you're a kid. You want to be a pirate because you get all that treasure, all right? Or is that just me? So you treasure. We share it, all right? Try to see how much you can give out just because of the fullness of Jesus Christ in your heart. Luke 6, 38, we often use this for giving, but it's really not talking about financial money. Luke 6, but it says give and you receive. It's talking about everything. Give, you receive. The gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over, poured out onto your lap. The amount you give will return, determine the amount you get back. Give your life away, amen? Once you begin living generously, you'll discover truly what life is about. I got this quote up here from, from Dr. Maxwell. People who add value to others do it intentionally. You got to plan on being, you got to be planning on giving and being generous. Because otherwise, the devil just takes that money right up, takes your time right up, takes your resources right up. You got to plan ahead of time. People who add value to others do so intentionally. I, I say that because to add value, leaders must give of themselves. It rarely occurs by accident. And finally, is this give Jesus. Give Jesus. Probably the most important thing we can do is store up treasures in heaven and share your faith with someone else. Because people live forever. That kid down the street that knows nothing about God, he's going to spend eternity somewhere. Perhaps you could be a person that just invites him to Sunday school or invites him to summer blasts or, or just shares the love of Christ. Because only people live forever. We're eternal spirits dwelling in temporary bodies. It's up to us to help others discover and accept all that God has for them. 2 Corinthians 5.20. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Do you feel the heaviness in, the vo in his voice that Paul's giving us in this? It's like he senses what God is feeling. He says, God is making an appeal. God is, if God could get on his knees, I don't know. I'm making an appeal to you people. <laughs> Help people. We're doing, come back to God. Come back to me. All those stories you heard about how I was mean and hard to get along with and just a no, fun breaker. <laughs> That's not true. God's appealing to us. Do your part to get people back. God, I wish he had plan B. He doesn't. God's plan is you and me. I said for years, I wish that he would have just had it all written in the sky, and every time somebody wondered, you just see exactly what you're supposed to, you know. But no, he chooses normal people like you and I because he's, that is the best plan. It's his plan. Come back to God. So begin now here on earth, planning on heaven. Matthew 6, 20, I talked about treasures. Store your treasures in heaven, and the treasures are people where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break and steal. So that's our final point today. People are the treasures we take to heaven. Amen? Now, as we close today, I, I'd, I'd like to take some time and pray before we break. We'll break in about five minutes, but uh, before we get there, I just, wanna, I just want to have you take a moment and not pray about the first test. We'll do that in a little bit. But pray about the second test. If you are taking the test today, and God said, what'd you do with what I gave you? <laughs> what do you think your answers would be? And relate it to people, not things. Well, God, I read my Bible, I did, yeah, that's all, that's important. But have any of your actions directed people back towards him and a relationship with eternity, with him? For some of you, that might be difficult. Because, well, I brought people to church, but they never raised their hand, or I, I, I've never had anyone say, thank you for telling me about Jesus. But can I just tell you ahead of time, <laughs> that's a lie from the pit of hell. You don't know the effect you have on people. We ain't going to see it until we're in heaven, and God reviews it with us, and you get your reward. So in the meantime, we don't go on what we feel or think. We just go on the word of God, and it says, do this. Go out there. Be generous. Be caring. Do what you need to do. Use your time. 
Use your talent. Touch people's lives in a way that they know it was God. Share your treasures. Share Jesus. So, Father, I just, over every person in the room, in the sound of my voice, Lord, I just ask that you would help us have an eternal perspective. It's not about gain here on earth. It's not about even the number of people that come to heaven. It's, it's our part. It's like, Lord Jesus, use us to make a difference in people's lives. Use ways we aren't even aware of yet. So you can just show us in heaven how we can touch people's lives for all eternity. Give us a heart and passion to keep people away from hell. Lord, give us a passion to help people choose to be with you. Now, there could be some in this room today, back to the first test, that um, if Jesus asked you, if God asked you, what did you do with my son Jesus? And you would say, not much. Now's the time between you and him. You can say, I have a relationship with him. I want to pray that with you. If there's anybody in the room today where you just say, you know what? I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I maybe know about him. I've done the religious things, but I've never desired like I do today. And this is burning on you right now. I've never had the desire like I do today to become best friends with him, to have a relationship with him, to talk to him every day, to have him talk to me every day, to know that all eternity rests in my relationship with him. And I'm ready to say, that's me today. If there's anybody like that in the room today, just be real bold. Just put your hand up for just a moment and then put it down. We're all going to say a prayer together. But if there's anybody in the room or listening online that say, you know what? I need a relationship with Jesus. Let's look up at the screen and let's just proclaim this prayer together. Say it with me. Here we go. Dear God, thank you that you love me and I have a good plan and purpose for my life. I'm sorry for ignoring you and doing things my way. I realize now that my sin has hurt you and the people around me, and for this, I'm truly sorry. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave your life for me and took the punishment for my sin. Please forgive me and help me now by the power of your Holy Spirit as we decide to live only for you. Amen. Now, heads up. Well, it's already up because you're up there. But that's one of those things when you say it together, you're declaring it. Well, Pastor, I did that a long time ago. It's a statement of faith. And I think there's nothing wrong with repeating over and over your allegiance because that one day we will all be with God. We will all be with Jesus. What did you do with my son? <laughs> what did you do? I want you to be working on that throughout the rest of your life until that one day when we're with him. And know ahead of time that, yes, you were designed to not only know him, everything in between, so you can make a difference. And the difference you're making is people's lives. Amen? That's what counts. So, Father, we'll have the worship team come up. Father, as we leave today, Lord, we just, we, just, we just receive what you have for us today, Father. Our goal is not heaven. Our goal is you, Jesus. Our goal is bringing as many people with us that you put across our path. Lord, we look forward to that day, that celebration, when we're all one in unity in heaven. But right now, Lord, give us the strength, give us the courage, give us the direction to do all we have been called to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, over on my left, we've got Pastor Dan and Peg over there. While we're singing our last song, if there's any area of prayer you would like to receive prayer for, go over there and just let them 
Tell them specifically. Let them pray for you. If you have an offering for us, if you have um, a connection card filled out, just fold that and put that in the black box back there. And then uh, and let me just pray over those things once again and then let them take off so you guys can get started. And I will pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for every gift that comes into this body. Father God, whether it's finances, whether it's abilities, whether it's talent, Father, Lord, I thank you that you bless people's jobs. You bless their economy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we follow your plan. Help us to be good stewards of everything everything you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let's stand and worship God one more time. Arise, my soul, remember this. He took my sin and he buried it no longer. Jesus lives in me, for I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the light. The gravel boast, but in the cross that saved my soul, all else is lost. The grip of fear has no hold on me. So where, oh death, where is your sting? No longer I who live. Christ Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the light. All, all of this for your glory. All, all of this for your glory. All, all of this for your glory. No longer I who live, Christ Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the light. Holy, we bless you in the name of Jesus and go have a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy that sunshine. <laughs>